What's a niche? Unassuming hobby that has a surprising dark side to it. Beekeeping. There are keepers who weaponized severe illnesses against others hives and many cases of hive theft every year. What the frick we need bees. Disney pin collectors. I like pins and will buy them when I am traveling as souvenirs. Apparently at Disney properties pin trading is a big thing. I had stopped by one of the kiosks at Disneyland because I wanted a few Star Wars pins and saw people trading pins with the employees. I was curious about it so I googled it a bit and was amazed by the black grey market of pin trading. People would buy knockoffs and then go to the parks and trade them to staff or other patrons. Even kids, for legit pins. Or they would find someone with a rare valuable pin that didn't know it's worth and try to rip them off. I guess with obsession comes darkness. I know a few people that are super into this. They cost so much money at the parks. I can't imagine how much a rare and elusive one costs. I'm not sure if it's still a thing, but when I played Magic, The Gathering a number of years ago, I heard some real horror stories about how competitive Pokemon and YuGio players were. One story involved a guy at a YuGio tournament holding a gun under the table to scare the opponent into losing. Stamp collecting. Some places won't mint stamps of a living person, so major collectors are waiting for certain people to finally die so they could complete certain sets or have special commemorative sets made. Whoa, that is surprisingly morbid. I suspect people with no experience assume that hobby store style group activities, like tabletop miniatures games, Pokemon etc. is just silly fun for nerds and kids, but the amount of drama, anger and bulls going on in those places as personalities clashes off the charts. I've heard stories ranging from stalking to assault to death threats, and that's just the normal side of how crazy it gets. Tabletop miniatures games, female, space, marines, ducks. Genealogy. You can uncover some family secrets that you might never really want to know. Some cousin marriages, some affairs. Once I found a birth certificate for a doorstep baby, I hope the baby and the mother found their peace in life. Ornithology aka bird watching. I've been harassed by other ornithologists over territory and high frequency spots. They will also use fake bird calls to scare birds away. One fellow left a bloody feather for me in a spot that I frequent. I have prepared a sharpened quill for the next encounter. I like how this sounds like it could be the behavior of actual birds. Wild ginseng hunting in rural Appalachia. The mountain gold roots are highly valuable, and illegal harvesting is big business. Lots of shady, and armed, characters traipsing through the woods to find the stuff. Drum core. Some core will literally push you past your breaking point. Some people end up getting stress fractures or worse and are told to push through them. I'd say the dark side of drum core, and pageantry in general, has definitely gotta be the sexual abuse exploitation of students by instructors. Horrifically common with band directors too, I've found. Behind that I'd probably say neglect on the part of admins. For example I've heard plenty of we ate mustard sandwiches for lunch for a week stories. My favorite is with knitting crocheting. Do you make a baby blanket out of wool and risk the child having an allergic reaction? Or do you make it out of synthetic fibers and have the blanket it melt onto the child should a fire happen? Either choice means you're a demon and want all babies to die. And yet, when we receive a blanket, we can't use it until they're 1 plus years old anyway. So it's all for looks or to sit in storage in the end anyway. Manhole cover enthusiasts. Found them while working on a school project. There are some sophisticated thieves in that community. Wild, seems like a difficult thing to show off. People will collect anything. Plant collecting. People poach them from nature, steal them from nurseries, conservatories and homes, file fake claims against the sellers to get their money back, paint plants to look like a different species, flip plants without proper quarantine and acclimation, and also sell infected plants, be it bugs, rot, mosaic virus etc. Honestly, it's shocking how many awful things can go wrong with collecting plants. Computer security. You start out with some naive idea about maybe fixing a bug you found in some software, and slowly become aware of an aggressively boring world consisting of multi-million dollar lawsuits, secretive organizations, politics, and international crime. 
It's good fun when you can ignore all that and fix some bugs or write a neat program though. I don't know about a dark side to it as a hobby, but music, great hobby, or some creative outlet, but professional music and music academia is toxic. Expecting students to work for 12 plus hours every day, constantly being compared to others in negative ways, the massive drug culture that surrounds music students, I don't know any music student that wasn't at least taking a dare all to study, if not coke and other drugs at times too, and professional music, at least professional orchestras and big bands, require such talent that you basically just have to practice non-stop for decades to get into them, which you learned how to do in music school, just pop some pills, do nothing but play your instrument, and have no life, it's getting better in a lot of schools and for a lot of people, thankfully. Classical music. I worked in a store that sold mostly classical records and a lot of the hardcore fans were incredibly pushy and nasty especially opera fans. And the whole world of classical performance is chock full of abusive behavior, obsession, and general craziness. As a professional opera singer, I have to agree with you. Lego. It's a kid's toy, right? Wrong. We have a chronic problem where new releases sell out almost immediately, going for vastly marked up prices while being unavailable to the public for months on end. Also, the Lego group treats product leaks like murder cases, surgically ferreting out the responsible party. It's like the Marvel's Hitman joke, and don't even get me started on the figure market. This is a relatively new creation since Covid got a lot of adult fans into the hobby and searching for rare and nostalgic figures. Cue a bunch of absolute jackasses going on eBay and buying specific figures in bulk because they think they're the new R Wild Street Buds. They will coordinate their attacks, going after somewhat rare but not impossible to find figures like Bale Organa or Captain Rex. This problem is uniquely pernicious in the LSW community which has several very cunty influencers in it, and sending them to the moon. Captain Rex is not a genuinely rare figure, he was in one set, yes, but it was a cheap, mass produced set a lot of people have. His price should be somewhere around $35-$40, like Grand Admiral Thrawn was before a certain M plus R character bought a bajillion. Instead, both Rex and Thrawn can go for upwards of $100. It's freaking mental. They've totally fricked the third party market. Treating it like a damned stocks game when all the general public wants is some cool toys. The LEGO Insta and YT communities are absolutely terrible. Surprisingly our reddits aren't though, with the exception of the sales ones, predictably, which have very strict guidelines but still fall prey to drama around counterfeiters and catfish. Remember those giant pants from the late 90s? Well. There's been an entire reseller market for them for years chock full of dedicated collectors and enthusiasts, mostly ravers because duh lol. The market used to be completely fair and you could usually snag yourself a couple of rare designs off ebay for a reasonable double digit price. All until, one guy, one freaking guy emerged over the past couple of years that has completely destroyed that market fairness. It's not even conjecture that it's just one person. It's a legitimate source of the demise of our little corner of the world. Essentially, an IG influencer started flooding eBay with insanely priced pants, like we're talking almost $1k on common items, and tied it all to his IG so people who had zero clue about our market figured that that's just what crap was worth. Couple that with skirting platform to buy low sell high, in this case, straight up scamming and his penchants for flat out stalking and threatening people who come after him and you have what we have now. Zero ability to continue our hobby with new rare items because now anyone who finds something at a thrift store thinks it's suddenly a gold mine. The stupid thing is, the guy claims to be an authority on this kind of fashion but genuinely has never been a part of any related community, especially since he's known and shunned lol. It's gotten so bad that there's even a recent article out about how the dude unknowingly sold something to Drake and it was claimed as a bootleg by another big celeb who made said clothing line. So now the guy is getting national attention for selling to a celeb, despite cleanly ripping him off. TL. DR. Big 90s pants collecting. Fun time. A scalper made it suck big time. This was an interesting write up. Definitely not a hobby I've heard about before. Unless you count the time I was a proud owner of Jinko jeans way back when. If you're interested, I'd recommend posting this, with some linked sources, 
Since guidelines can be a little strict, to our Habidrama, guaranteed folk they will get a kick out of it. Truffle hunting. My professor used to talk about how he knew guys that would get murdered just because of truffles, or how if you find a way to grow a mushroom like the morel in a farm, people would get murdered over that as well. I collect a few different kinds of toys for the nostalgia, and let me tell you, adult toy collectors can be terrible, entitled brats. Contrary to what they believe adults are not the target demographic, the companies are catering to children. Stop harassing them on social media. Stop bullying little children over it. Scalping can be a huge issue as well. People would buy whole shelves of things just to resell at a markup. Adults who aren't into it sometimes assume the worst of you, and the worst there is. I'm just an adult who spends some of their fun money on cute colorful things. Sometimes you're just trying to make friends and you stumble into a kink community. People can do what they'd like as long as it's safe, sane and consensual, but you can get surprised by it or have it pushed on you. The most frequent kink grosses me out actually and I really have to watch who I interact with. I don't know if this is really surprising but bodybuilding, weight training and darting is a great habit that I'd recommend to every young man. But every bodybuilder big enough to make it into magazines or even get big on Instagram is using steroids and peds. Young dudes get into them just to keep up. The endocrine system is very delicate and complex and dudes in their early 20s or younger are just totally winging it themselves with hormones bought online from China with Bitcoin. Best practice is not to go on test unless you're prepared to be on it for your whole life because your natural testosterone levels might never recover if you pin for long enough. That's a huge freaking commitment for a young dude who likes lifting to make. I'm struggling to remember the name of the weight loss drug which is super effective to lose fat, but is incredibly hard on your body and even a small overdose can result in death through overheating. Crap's serious and every young man who gets really into it has to make a choice between becoming physically dependent on powerful illegal drugs, and never measuring up to his idols. It's amazing how many firearms are faked. Paratrooper M1A1 carbine, likely a fake. Almost anything Nazi SS is faked. Navy Lugas are faked. The Singer Sewing Machine Company, made 500 M1911 pistols. Only 1,500 survive. Winchester M97 trench guns are faked. Sniper rifles of almost any origin are faked. I could go on, but you have to have a very discerning eye if you want to be a collector of high-end antique arms. Alternate photography, vaporized mercury, cyanide, silver nitrate etc. For wet plate there are some good substitutes but you still have to really know what you are dealing with. Matchbox, or similar, car collectors. They're even weirder than fanatic model train people since they're after that one rare or defective piece out of a run of hundreds of thousands. I worked in a toy hobby shop years ago, 1970s, and they were just... Weird, like Jeffrey Dahmer weird. Creeped me the frick out but you had to help them out since that was the job. Years later I was in a hotel in the metro Chicago area for work and they were having a matchbox collector's convention. They were still just a freaking creepy all those years later. I like to collect Hot Wheels matchbox cars. I usually just like to stick with trucks and muscle cars, and movie TV cars. I try not to take it too seriously, just finding ones that really appeal to me instead of the treasure hunts and red lines. But I hear about collectors who work at Walmart and other places that hoard all the good ones that come in off the truck. Writing a fanfic. People can obsess over characters and have unhealthy attachments to them, depending on the person. Their real life problems and personality might start to get written into their stories which they can turn into any sort of fantasy. I just wanna write a Star Wars sequel rewrite man. I have a friend that writes Godzilla fan fiction and his life goal is to make a Godzilla film. It's weird and surreal because he's actually skilled enough at directing and concept art for this to happen, and is developing the connections. I wonder if there are other stories of people brute forcing their fan fix into the official canon. Knitting. I've accidentally cut myself with my needles that required gluing shut. Imagine the damage I could do on purpose. Comma imagine the damage I could do on purpose. Make someone an ugly scarf and visit them regularly in the winter. They'll feel obligated to wear it. Not a shocker but I've heard from friends that Civil War reenacting can get pretty toxic. 
Obviously you've got the whole revisionist sect who wants to glorify terrorists and slave traders. But there's also lots of angry obsessive old men who will throw a fit if your union cavalry uniform doesn't have the right number of buttons in the perfect thread count. Sports jersey collecting my two friends did this people make fakes a lot. Also people use custom jersey sites to make random obscure jerseys that is Michael Jordan White Sox. They also would buy rookie jerseys and hope the player either is amazing or dies in his or her prime so the jersey will cost more. An example of this is my friend gave me a Sean Taylor jerseys for my birthday. He was shot in his prime when the Washington Redskins were somewhat relevant. The price of that jersey has skyrocketed since the name change. A lot of audio engineers music producers end up with tinnitus, constant annoying tone in ear, and can lose hearing in certain frequency ranges. I can't believe no one has mentioned surfing. You'd be surprised how territorial surfing is. In some parts of SoCal you can get in fist fights for cutting people off. Even worse localism has led to some surfer gangs forming. Not surprising if you surf but as someone recently new to surfing it surprised me. Tying flies for fly fishing. Some of the designs use exotic bird feathers. Museums have had their collections broken into and robbed for the birds in their collections. Playing drums. It's not a dark side per se but people always underestimate the damage it can do to your hearing and fingers, which is nothing worse than blisters and calluses in my experience. But ear protection is more than necessary. I wonder how bad violin was for my hearing. Those things are loud and it's literally right next to your ear. Biking tends to get a pass for being environmentally friendly, however, carbon fiber bike frames at the end of their lives can sit in a landfill. That being said, I love biking. Beekeeping tbh. One day this year one of my dad's entire hives left without a trace. Last year and the year before we lost hives to moths. Medievalist hobbyists, SCA, HEMA, even more academically oriented officially historically focused groups like Medieval Academy of America, Renaissance Society of America, etc. What at first glance looks to be a fun excuse to go camping in funny clothes, drink a lot of homebrew, and play battle with friends. Turns out to harbor a lot of folks from white Euro supremacist, religiously fundamentalist and or militaristic authoritarian mindsets. It seems they're all lured in by an idealized, mythologized, societal peak that they, falsely, believe existed in their respective self-identification subcultures. The intersections of these different groups on their own, let alone how they often overlap with the other artists performers costumers, fantasists, renfolk, romantics and academics that make up another huge portion of the memberships, can make for some very, interesting social dynamics. My partner's mum is in a miniatures group and the amount of drama that gets created out of literally nothing is insane. It's basically a group of grumpy elderly women who all talk behind each other's backs and get unreasonably, scathingly angry at each other. Knitting has some odd dark sides. There have been numerous indie yarn dyers that have faked their own deaths to get out of fulfilling orders. Some scam artists are so common in the knitting world that there are forums on Ravelry, a knitting website, dedicated to tracking them when they change company names their names so people know to beware. Living history Renfair and the Scar, in my experience. 1. Renfair. Uh, I've been sexually assaulted. I was told it's just fair. Note, I'm a man. Yes, men get sexually assaulted too. And frick anyone who says we can't be. B. An ex-girlfriend was sexually assaulted. She brushed it off because it's just fair. C. Watching grown men. 40 plus years act like teenage boys. Drinking. Getting into fights. Bullying. Etc. D. Rampant drug use. 2. In the scar. I was treated like a red-headed stepchild for being a rapier fighter. Kingdom of the West. Supposedly the attitude has changed since I was there. But the buttholes in charge didn't burn that bridge. They dynamited it. And I have no intention of rebuilding. Add to that grown adults acting like freaking teenage kids in a high school popularity contest. 
3. At another living history event, the identity politics have gone overboard to the point that it's starting to become unrecognizable. The identity politics of today should not interfere in the accurate portrayal of another age for the public. It ignores and disrespects the suffering and sacrifices the people of that age who fought to make our current lives better, as well as erases teaching the public what life was like back then, and how it needed to change. Okay hear me out, beating. I mean people that make handmade jewelry. I was once at a craft convention and saw two owners of rival bead shops go wild. The male owner of one store tried to walk into the rival store's stall to check it out. So the owner of that stall stepped in front of him screaming stop. He's trying to rape me. Everyone he's trying to rape me help. Call the police while ramming into him into him and flailing around. She then fell on the floor and was pretending to lose consciousness saying look at what he did to me. Did you see him hit me? Oh the pain so he just turned around and left. My friend worked at the bead shop of the woman screaming and the woman said that her actions were justified because she didn't want him finding out who was making their new glass beads that people were buying by the bucket for. She didn't work there long after that because she was afraid for her safety. Ball jointed doors. The Chinese market has taken to creating knockoffs and counterfeits, recasts, and are making a lot of bank off of it, taking the designs of small artists and larger doll companies without their consent, making a mold of said doll and then casting it anew. There's a lot of people against it, and a small minority actively ostracized people who buy these counterfeits. On the other side, people who buy counterfeits. And again a minority acting like they're some kind of misunderstood woe is me folk who are better than the big bad bullies who are against art theft. People who are silent on the topic are often assumed to approve of recasts. And neutrality is not appreciated on either side of the debate. The debate has turned to bullying, death threats and so forth. Miniature war games can get pretty competitive and unpleasant at times. And arguments over rules have occasionally led to table flipping. Which as you can imagine is a horrible, destructive occurrence that usually completely destroys hundreds of not thousands of dollars in models. Tournaments with prizes on the line are the worst for this, which isn't to say that most of them aren't perfectly pleasant and well run events. Thankfully, just that it's the lure of a reward that attracts the worst chuds. The grim, dystopian background of Warhammer games in particular also sometimes attracts far right types, or just simply edgelords, who revel in it. Painting and modeling tasteless atrocities or sexualized content on their models. Or using the game's imagery to meme about how much they want to commit genocide or crusades just like their in-game heroes. It's not so much dark as puerile, but off-putting all the same. Fish collecting. There's a black market where expensive fish shops will get robbed at gunpoint. Sometimes murdering the owners just to get the fish. A great book on this by journalist Emily Voigt. Making and selling crafts online. Tiny crochet animals to be exact. When my sister started this hobby she was trolled and bullied by other sellers relentlessly. Magic. The sleight of hand kind. Particularly the mind reading department. A serious practitioner could genuinely use the knowledge to easily manipulate friends, co-workers, loved ones, etc. While seemingly having nothing to do with it. Not that I would ever do this. But a few examples could easily be, manipulating your significant other to giving you more consensual sex. Key word here is manipulate. Manipulating a co-worker to quit their job on their own volition so that you could get that special promotion instead. Manipulating a friend to open them up for exploitation. Lending you money. Sleeping with their loved one. Having them hand over their personal belongings. Etc. Starting a cult religion. Yee DND. Why? Because you're going to want to spend hundreds thousands of dollars on books, figures, dice, and various other wastes of money. At 15 I'd already spent a few hundred dollars on books and dice, and it's gotten worse. Com a few hundred dollars on books and dice. Laughs in high gothic. Leather working which benefits greatly from the meat industry, oh, and Dungeons and Dragons, which benefits greatly from the masochism of avid role players. All my hobbies include hurting things. There are lawyers who specialize in identifying rare books or documents with questionable origins and suing their owners to hand them over, so they can sell them again. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.
bye for now.